Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where and when you are watching this newscast. Welcome to This is the Week that Was in Virtualization Cloud and EUC, brought to you by TVP Strategy. That's right, TVP Strategy, not the virtualization practice. We've changed our names, we've gone through a rebranding, and we are now the newer and better, more inclusive virtualization practice called TVP Strategy. I am Tom Howarth, and welcome to the latest of our video news roundups. First, the headlines. Avast are purchasing AVG in a deal worth approximately $1 billion. I've always wanted to do that. And VMware have appointed a chief open source officer. Cisco have ramped up their cloud security portfolio by acquiring Port Straight Cloud Lock. And Xenos have released NetApp, sorry, NetFlow Insight. So, with Intel rumoured to be offloading their new security their security division, formerly known as McAfee, it's obvious that a change is in the air. With the adoption of cloud-based technologies, they've disrupted the security ecosystem and also new threat models have been produced, etc. etc. This is causing a phase shift in the security. Avast and AVG are two of the biggest players in the free antivirus product market space and both provide a popular antivirus product that's free to use for end users. Now, Avast have announced that it was acquiring AVG for approximately $1 billion, and this is a pretty number for a company that has seen a year-on-year -year drop of income for the last three years. Now, if you actually take it over five years, they've had their revenue has dropped, sorry, not revenue, their net income has dropped from $100 million prop margin to uh, approximately $41 million, and that's quite a drop. However, the purchase does make Avast the dominant player in the free AV space. Now, VMware have appointed a uh, long-time Intel exec Dirk Hondal as their first ever chief open source officer. Hondal was spent the last 15 years at Intel as their chief Linux and open source technologist and prior to that was with Suzy Linux. Uh, they've state, VMware have stated that the role will be aimed at getting and aiding business units to work with and contribute to open source communities and to also foster the use of open source products and technologies to speed software development. So I think this appointment actually is more of a recognition that open source can no longer be ignored by VMware. Their traditional market is being attacked by things like KVM, AVG, AHV from Nutanix is a constant needle in their side. You've got containers knocking on their door You've got open source monitoring solutions like Nagios, Splunk. So the market space is different and it's, I think it's more of a, as I say, recognition by VMware that things are changing. So Cisco, they've ramped up their cloud security portfolio by announcing the acquisition of CloudLock. This is for 293 million. Now, CloudLock specialized in Access security. They provide enterprises with visibility and analysis around user behavior and sensitive data in cloud based applications and services. They use APIs to protect, to protect clouds. Now, this is whether a device is a managed device or a unmanaged device. So, all your endpoints are uh, going to be protected. Uh, this is another bold move by Cisco. Is it attempts to reinvent itself under the new CEO. It adds to the recent acquisitions of the likes of Land, Landcope and OpenDNS, and it does build on the fleshing out of their security portfolio. So again, good move by Cisco. Xenos, they've released OpenFlow Insight to monitor, analyze, and collate the uh, massive amounts of NetFlow data that's now being generated on the net on a modern network. So this will be another arrow in the quiver of uh, network operations teams when they <clears throat> to utilize when they're uh, monitoring their modern networks. Uh, it's, it's getting more and more pertinent as we're pushing more and more data over the wires with things like Internet of Things, the more and more endpoints, more and more sensors, all pushing more and more data. This is going over airwaves, going over wires, and it's very very difficult to actually know what's going on in your environment 
So NetFlow Insights, it'll provide the ability to monitor the end-to-end -end traffic flows, it enable better root cause analysis of issues, and it should also increase the ability for preventative interaction because you'll be able to see what's going on and arguably you will be able to notice where issues are happening and in an SDN environment you'll be able to move flows from possible hotspots to more quieter parts of the network because of the, the analysis. So on to news from our sponsors. So Veeam, they have a new COO and president in Peter McKay and they have a new CEO in the form of William Largent. This is after Ratmir Timoshev and Andrei Baranov stepped down and also, happy birthday to Veeam, they're 10 years old. Christie Software, they've introduced Clone Manager. This is a real-time replication service that can produce uh, hot standbys of live systems for instant recovery. Hytrust, they've collaborated with VMware, RSA, Intel and NIST over the development of NIST IR7904. This is a concept blueprint that's to be used when implemented trusted geolocations in the cloud. Puppet Lab, they're gearing up for their Puppet Lab co conference uh, 2006 that's in San Diego between the 19th and the 21st of October. They've released their speaker lineup, so details of that can be found on their, their website or in the events calendar on t the TVP strategy site. They've also come They've also released their 2016 State of DevOps re report that attempts to um, address some of the more pressing issues in DevOps today. So, all that remains now is to uh, thank you for listening and remind you that if you see something that you think is newsworthy, send it to news at virtualizationpractice.com and uh, we'll get it included. Thank you and goodbye.